First up, Manuel made the concept art for Kulosukus, pretty much showing off its slime ability, which lets it climb and makes it really hard to grab for other creatures. This ability will also need to be recharged in mud, which will make them vulnerable on the ground. Michael has completed the code for stats, fracture, health, bleed, hunger, thirst, stamina, and a couple for basic attacks. Ragdoll and fall damage is planned but not yet added. They are also still working on adding slots for sound slash UI and VFX slash decal. JJ has been working in Subsistence Painter to rework the arcane backer skins for Ceratosaurus. It has a little bit of glow there that you can see in these 3D models as well as to create the skins from our contest winners from the Discord. Gorilla Workshop has continued working on Kilobator locomotion animations with the idle, trot, and sprint animations being complete. A Kilobator will be able to climb, so those are some of the animations we could be looking forward to next. With that, MZ has been working on a Kilobator and Lufangosaurus Foley sounds to include the body impacts, footsteps, and attack effects. He will be working next on the game's ambience and immersion sounds. Kleiner seems to have some secret work going on with Stegosaurus. We pretty much just got the screenshot and not much else. Info has completed a basic rig for Torvosaurus and really wants you to know that the slit eyes are temporary. Curse has given us a glimpse of the base sculpts for Anzu and Pachyrhinosaurus. They will be making one for Kulosuchus as well. Fern has been designing some of the alien structures. It has a really Egyptian vibe to it, so I don't know if that's what they're going for, but it's really cool. Adrian is putting the final touches on Pachycephalosaurus and should be ready to work on Anzu and Pachyrhino by the next dev blog. They mentioned having to keep in mind growth morphs, which you can see in this next image with Ceratosaurus. We have both the juvenile and the adult side by side. Antony spent a lot of time getting creatures to turn without breaking their backs, as well as implementing the UI concepts into the actual game. But the biggest thing is finally getting a visual for scent, which is going to work with a pulse that lets you see footsteps and creatures within a certain radius. And that's a wrap on their first dev blog. Here's to many more. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking this video. You're so awesome. Stay tuned for more recaps.